Good afternoon, friends and families. Our presentation topic is on the blood-brain barrier. But first, let's introduce our scientists. My name is Serena Lee Sharp. I go to River Ridge High School, and I plan on majoring in neuroscience. My name is Gayatri Thigavarpu. I go to Juanita High School, and I plan on studying biology and global health. My name is Kai Anderson. I go to Chief Self International High School, and I plan on studying biochemistry. Memory, emotion, motor skills, and thinking. None of this will be possible without the brain. The brain is a center of physiological activity in our bodies, integrating information from the external environment with signals from the internal environment to execute specific activities. With all of this occurring at a microscopic level, it is crucial that the chemical environment of the brain is strictly regulated. This is the primary function of the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier, also known as the BBB, is a key structure in the human central nervous system that provides the brain with protection from foreign microorganisms possibly circulating the bloodstream. This diagram displays a cross-section of the capillary in the brain, and all the shapes around it are key parts of the blood-brain barrier, which will be further explained in the following slide. Uh, so here is a picture of the structure of the barrier. Uh, as you can see, there are many components each of which play important roles in the functionality and integrity of the barrier. Uh, so there are endothelial cells, so these perform bloodstream and tissue exchanges with the, uh, the rest of the bloodstream to get things to the brain. Uh, there are the parasites, so these uh, regulate the endoth endothelial cells, so essentially control what they're doing. Uh, the capillary basement membrane, um, which contributes to the structural integrity of the barrier and the astrocyte end feet, and these secrete uh, fluids that form tight junctions. Uh, so tight junctions are protein formations that prevent leakage and they seal gaps between cells. So the blood-brain barrier, despite its purpose, it's not impenetrable. Um, molecules and microbes can enter the brain on some occasions. Uh, I mean, obviously it can be harmful. Uh, but that being said, the barrier can also work too well. So in the case of some diseases, treatments need to get through the barrier. However, the BBB makes this a very difficult, uh, difficult task, and researchers are currently finding ways to solve this problem. Uh, so pictured here is a diagram of uh, a, a breach. So you can see here that there are larger molecules uh, inside, but they are sort of struggling to move around because they don't have a ton of space. But the small molecules are able to enter and move around rather freely. So because the BBB is meant to keep things out, a breach can sometimes be referred to as a leak. Generally, only lipid-soluble, positively charged molecules, uh, molecules with a low molecular weight, you know, less than 400 to 600 Daltons, can cross the BBB. If the barrier is operating improperly and for an object into the brain, a person can experience seizures, memory loss, brain fog, even ADD or ADHD symptoms, chronic fatigue, mood disorders, specifically anxiety and depression, or even muscular sclerosis. Um, so there's, uh, there can be, so these damages can be caused by uh, a lot of different things, so there's vascular issues like stroke and hypertension or diabetes, um, physical head traumas and concussions can cause direct damage to the BBB as well as mental health issues that produce toxins and stress hormones. Um, so because of the adverse symptoms, it's likely that we have or at some point will experience a leaky brain. Um, the symptoms don't have to be extreme, they can be minor, and it can, it can return to its own normal function within seven to, ten, seven to 10 days without treatment. Most of the symptoms and causes are interdependent and co-contribute to their own issues. So for example, uh, mental, health, mental health issues can cause damage to the BBB, but damage in the BBB can cause mental health issues. So it's a complicated cycle. So, uh, speaking of interdependent systems, many of the same factors that cause a leaky gut, like poor gut health, unhealthy diet, food intolerances and sensitivities, toxins and infections, can also create a leaky brain with something called the brain-gut axis. So, essentially the brain stem connects to the vagus nerve, which in turn connects to all the digestive organs, including the system known as the gut microbiome. Uh, and some probiotics from the gut called psychobiotics are able to cross the blood-brain barrier, and this impacts our mental well-being in both positive and negative ways. Uh, an example of a psychobiotic would be Lactobacillus rhamnosus, which is a, a, quote, friendly bacteria used to aid in the treatment of anxiety. 
So when it comes to clinical diagnosis, um, science researchers and doctors have found that dysfunction in the blood-brain barrier has been identified as an early biomarker in neurodegenerative diseases, including uh, causing vascular dysfunction and neuroinflammation. So diagnosis can look like testing for abnormal amounts of protein and the CSF, so they just drain fluid from the spine. Um, they can also identify key cells and signals in vascular pathology changes. Lastly, they can, they can also look for reduced blood flow. Uh, the quickest and common treatments are supplements. B1 is an example of a great vitamin to help restore the integrity of a damaged BBB. An example of a medical condition directly affecting the central nervous system is called cerebral abscess, also known as brain abscess. This occurs when bacteria or fungi make their way to the brain by crossing the blood-brain barrier and make possible pockets of infected material in the brain, as shown in the picture. An example of one kind of bacteria that can do this is E. coli, which primarily affects lambs and mice. However, by crossing the blood-brain barrier, it can cause infections in the brains of humans too. This causes the brain to swell, putting harmful pressure on it that can cause headaches, fevers, visual disturbances, and seizures. Typically, antibiotics would be used to treat a bacterial infection like this, but many antibiotics are unable to cross the blood-brain barrier. Due to this issue, surgery has become a primary treatment for cerebral abscess. Another example of a medical condition that stems from a blood-brain barrier dysfunction is a neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's. This usually occurs genetically when someone inherits a gene that causes their endothelial cells to undergo structural changes that limit their connections with other components of the brain. This contributes to a leaky neurovascular unit, also called a leaky brain, and this allows toxic substances to enter the brain tissue in large amounts. This dysfunction triggers the inflammation of the nervous tissue, which is called neuroinflammation, and this eventually leads to cognitive impairment and the onset of dementia. Regulating the function of the blood-brain barrier may be a new therapeutic agent for treating Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. So this image shows a healthy brain in comparison to a brain with Alzheimer's disease. In a study carried out by a radiologist in the Netherlands, MRI scans were made on patients who had early signs of Alzheimer's and MRIs were also made on patients with healthy brains. The leakage rates of the blood-brain barrier were measured and people who had Alzheimer's had a significantly higher um, blood-brain barrier leakage, which is what those red highlights represent. The leakage in the blood-brain barrier basically means that there are not any protective means being put on the brain, and this causes the stability of brain cell interactions to be disrupted, which eventually leads to dysfunction in the brain. So moving on from uh, Alzheimer's, here's uh, some examples of the blood-brain barrier being taken into consideration in research. So here at Seattle Children's, Dr. Jim Olson uh, developed a solution to the issue of distinguishing between healthy and cancerous tissue in the brain. So during uh, surgery to remove cancerous cells, it's very difficult to distinguish between uh, cancerous cells and healthy cells. Uh, and this can sometimes mean that healthy cells are taken out on accident or not all the cancerous cells are removed. Um, so Dr. Jim Olson found uh, a molecule in the venom of the death stalker scorpion that had the ability to cross the barrier. He attached a fluorescent dye to the quote carrier molecule uh, and this goes into the brain and lights up cancerous cells and essentially highlights them for surgeons to remove and it is called tumor paint. So some other um, advancements using the blood brain barrier in research um, over the past few years Caltech has been experimenting with viruses that can cross the BBB in a Trojan horse sort of method. The viral components of the viruses are scraped out and replaced with therapeutic cargo, which can enter the BBB for treatment. So using these viral shells, researchers are able to learn about how things can cross the BBB, and it gives insight on how to develop better medications. Like it was mentioned earlier in the slide about the flaws of the BBB, um, sometimes it works too good it works just too well and doctors can't get in the medication that they need to, so this is a way to get around that. Um, additionally, Dr. Kudumi, a, a pharmaceutical scientist at Auburn University, discovered that 30 milliliters a day of this substance, when ingested orally, significantly improved clinical dementia ratings and behavioral scores. It also reduced the BBB permeability and enhanced functional connectivity only after six months of consumption. Is there any guesses to what this substance might be? Vinegar. Apple juice? Apple juice? Urine? Urine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So it's actually extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> so what are the next steps?
steps in finding treatments for conditions related to the blood-brain barrier. An idea which scientists are currently researching is finding ways to manipulate the blood-brain barrier's permeability, as this would allow us to possibly strengthen it at times, such as when a neurodegenerative disease such as Alzheimer's is causing a leaky brain. It would also allow us to temporarily weaken it when antibiotics need to reach the brain, such as in cases with cerebral abscess. It is important for the general public to care about this, because the brain system is one of the most important parts of the body, and as mentioned before, it is highly likely to develop a neurological condition at some point in life. By learning more about the blood-brain barrier, we can find treatments for many diseases affecting the central nervous system, and even treatments for many neurodegenerative diseases that do not currently have a cure. Although neuroscience is one of the largest growing scientific mysteries, there are still so many gaps of knowledge in the simple functions of the brain and its capability. By learning more about the blood-brain barrier, the protector of our body's most important organ, we can help improve the health of our future. Thank you, and we're now gonna open it up for questions.